Palestinians right now are scared, anxious, despondent, depressed. Pick your negative adjective. Rafa, normally a small city next to Egypt, is extremely overcrowded these days. Hosting the majority of Gaza's 2.2 million people, Rafa is Hamas's last major stronghold in the Gaza Strip. However, on May 7, 2024, Rafa's fate hung in the balance after Hamas said it had accepted a ceasefire for hostage deal. Israel said its tanks took control of the vital Rafa crossing into Gaza in a pinpoint operation against Hamas. But this sudden move of IDF raised two questions. Why now and does it matter? Has Israel crossed the red line with the current Rafa operation? The Israel-Hamas war went from a potential short-term ceasefire to strikes on Rafah on May 7. Israeli forces airdropped leaflets on people in East Rafah on May 5th night, warning Palestinians to go to a safe zone. However, the operation in East Rafah began just hours later. With the capture of the Rafah crossing, Israel gained full control over the entry and exit of people and goods for the first time since it withdrew soldiers and settlers from Gaza nearly 20 years ago. Last night I ordered, with the approval of the War Cabinet, to operate in Rafah. Within hours, our forces raised the Israeli flags at the Rafah crossing and took down the Hamas flags. Entrance to Rafah serves two main war goals, the return of our hostages, and the elimination of Hamas. Up until now, Hamas was able to control what comes in and who goes out of Gaza. Anyone leaving Gaza for Egypt needs to go through the crossing, with Hamas reportedly extorting enormous sums from wealthy Gazans looking for a way out. But now, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called the capture of the crossing an important step toward dismantling Hamas's military. Hamas, entrenched in Gaza, particularly in Rafah, has exploited the city's strategic position. And now Palestinians have nowhere else to flee. The ball is in the court of the Israelis and in the court of the American administration. Because before this agreement was presented to us, the details that we agreed to were approved by all the mediators, including the American side. If the Israelis continue their aggression, we will certainly defend our land, our people, and our rights. And if it is accepted by Israel, then we will start to work on implementation. Right now, Netanyahu finds himself in a trap and has refrained from doing anything for far too long. With the growing West's pressure on Netanyahu, Hamas feels Israel is weaker than ever, both domestically and internationally. Hamas has no reason to agree to anything less than an end to Israel's operations in Gaza. And Netanyahu has vowed to eliminate Hamas, a goal that is and always was impossible. If the Israel Defense Forces invade Rafah, the city will become a charnel house. Victory in the Gaza war, launched after Hamas's October 7th attack in southern Israel, would be impossible without taking Rafah. Seizing the passage in Rafah today is a very important step. An important step on the way to destroying the remaining military capabilities of Hamas, including the elimination of the four terrorist battalions in Rafah, and an important step to damage the governmental capabilities of Hamas. Because as of this morning, we denied Hamas a passage that was essential for establishing its reign of terror in the Strip. However, when the West put Hamas under the spotlight and gave more importance to the group for a ceasefire deal, the terrorist organization felt it was in the driver's seat that it could dictate terms. Israel was coming under intense pressure from the international community to both not go into Rafah and to stop the war. So, entering Rafah and raising the Israeli flag 
their matters, especially as it signifies that Israel's threat to take over Rafah is real.